Welcome to We Are SC Game Day. This is Eric McKinney, joined this week by Greg Katz. And Greg, before we actually get into any sort of game weekend trip to Arizona State stuff, Thursday morning, USC President Carol L. Fult, she announced the new athletic director for the Trojans. It's Mike Bone, had been reported for about a week. Uh, he comes over from Cincinnati. That, that interesting connection, Mike McGee, the last uh, USC athletic director who was not a former USC star football player, he also came over from Cincinnati. So maybe, maybe down the line, Cincinnati just kind of turns into to a uh, proving ground for USC athletic directors. But I, I want to turn it over to you. you. You were there at the press conference. I was there too. I, I have some thoughts as well. But, but I'm curious, your initial takeaways from – listening to but I guess both President Fult and Mike Bone talk talk uh, on Thursday morning well needless to say they're both incredibly enthusiastic so if you feel that the last decade has been kind of a low-key low 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 level uh, energy I mean if you had Mike Garrett then you had Pat Hayden uh, you had uh, Lynn Swan this was like a jolt back when Bone started talking, I said, boy, is he on any medication or something? I, I, I mean, it was unbelievable. I mean, he was like uh, a cheerleader. And you know what? Maybe that's what's been needed. I know he was well-received that way. I mean, he came off as genuine. Uh, he was introduced by uh, Carol Fold, who was always as sparky and, you know, bubbly and whatever. I mean, considering all the negative times, both inside athletics and academia, it's a breath of fresh air as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, you know, is it the right pick? Only time will tell, but I will say this. I know why she uh, picked him. In fact, after the official uh, news conference, they both were stayed around and I was able to kind of mingle in with the other writers for, for both people. And uh, Carol Fultz said, I knew he was the right one. We, we just hit it off with our personalities and the positiveness and so on and so forth. So from the initial standpoint, uh, I thought he answered all the questions appropriately. I think that, you know, the writers were, you know, let's be honest, Urban Myers on everybody's brain. Okay. But I think they gave some answers to about Urban Meyer without saying his name. I think that some of the questions were pointed about Urban Meyer without saying his name. And of course, the football program was addressed without making uh, Clay Helton look like uh, uh, a lame duck. And I give a lot of credit to, uh, you know, for Bone for handling what, what was really a, a, a kind of a question that could have been explosive. But uh, all in all, it was one of those few times I've actually gone to a press conference that I was looking forward to. And the turnout was tremendous. And I say to myself, uh, when they, if, if, they name a new football coach, which is anticipated at some point. Uh, it's going to be very interesting. Yeah, I, I'm with you. The takeaway from those types of, of press conferences, and I was there for, for Pat Hayden and, and Lynn Swan, it, it always feels positive. It's almost easy to make a good first impression on that because people, people want it to be a good first impression. They, they want you to be able to hit the ground running and do a good job. So it, you have to grade a little bit on the curve for that that being said I, I'm with you kind of every step of the way I, I don't think that this was an athletic director hire that is sort of cherry picking the best of the best in terms of names you heard sort of thrown about as, as potential uh, you know interviews or, or you know if, if you're looking at the a plus level uh, athletic directors th this was not from that so there has to be a little bit of a Pete Carroll, right time, right place, right situation, click uh, for Mike Bone. And you certainly don't anticipate that happening a lot, that getting that sort of Pete Carroll production from a situation like this. But boy, it did feel like he has that enthusiasm, and that energy that particularly the USC student athletes, and that's football players, that's, you know, tennis players, that's water polo players, that, that's all of them that they need at this time, just like with you mentioned with all of kind of the, the scandal uh, in the department and really that has nothing to do with 
the student athletes. They need that guy who's going to buy into them and be there for them. Be there, period, let's face it. <laughs> Show up for the job. Uh, and, and he felt like that kind of guy. Like you said, enthusiastic beyond belief. Uh, he, was, he took to Twitter kind of the rest of the day just sort of showcasing where he was on campus. He, he took in uh, the, the marching band practice. He was at uh, Tommy Trojan for, for a photo op. He, he was kind of all over. Um, took a picture with one of the gate attendance guys. You know, the, the, here, here's the first guy I, I met uh, at USC, kind of set the tone for the day. So he's that, he's that kind of guy. And I, and I don't think it's fake. And I could see, like you mentioned, when Carol Fultz said that she knew right away, you know, you, you kind of get that vibe from him that, that he is that kind of guy. So again, easy to give sort of A's and A pluses on, on what it feels like at one of these press conferences. But I, I think there's some substance to him. And, and the fact that he can say, I've done this for X amount of years. This is not his first go around. He's done this at, at smaller schools. He's done this at bigger schools, Colorado and, and Cincinnati being his last two. He has some experience he can fall back on. He knows what it's supposed to look like and what it's not supposed to look like. And I think those are big pluses for him going in. And we'll see kind of how it clicks. Like you mentioned, he gets a, he gets a big decision right away. And, and he was asked about, kind of this decision that being the one with the head football coach being kind of a, a legacy maker within certainly within the first month uh, of him being on campus what he does with clay Helton, do you keep him on do you go a different way if you do go a different way where what is that answer uh where do you go those, those are all massive questions uh that he's going to answer some get, breaking down into a little bit of, of specifics that he talked about the quote that stands out for me is when he was talking, when he was asked about how he expects kind of Clay Helton and the football team to finish the rest of the season. And he specifically said, you know, the, the motto is fight on. So they expect him to finish strong, but he was very quick to add it. And it certainly felt like he had this kind of keyed up to, to use during this he said that the whole thing is fight on to victory. And that's something that he expects. That's something that Carol Fultz expects. And he said that's something he knows the Trojan family expects. So he certainly laid that out there again about that specific. He, he talked about this as kind of a 21 program wide thing, but brought this up specifically when asked about football that he laid out there that, that it is about wins and losses. And that I think is as much of a statement as you're going to kind of get from anybody who, again, admitted he had not met Clay Helton yet uh, to that point. They did meet later in the day. But what, was there anything for you kind of in terms of specifics that he talked about or, or things that he brought up uh, that, that kind of stood out as a, as a quote or just even paraphrasing it? Well, you know, I'm, I'm going to go with something you, you, you touched on. Uh, I actually had that quote in front of me. He said, we, we in, in terms of Helton, we expect him to finish strong. It's important to win. I'm not trying to add more pressure to him or the student athletes. Good programs finish strong. In that paragraph, what struck me was uh, he kept harping on winning. And so did Carol Fultz. In fact, from the very get-go, it was all about national championships. It wasn't about South Division or going to a conference championship game. It's about national championships. In fact, she emphasized the word national one time. And the fact that he, you know, he says that he's, you know, he watched the Oregon game and he's going to watch the ASU game, but he's going to be back in Cincinnati tying up some loose ends with, you know, former employees of the University of Cincinnati. But I like where he said, I'm not trying to add more pressure, but, okay, that told me he knows that Helton's under a lot of pressure, okay? He knows it. And he and he's and he's kind of like he just kind of dropped it, but then he says, "Good programs finish strong." Well, right now I I think we could all agree on SC is not a good program by SC standards, okay? And finishing strong, in other words, you better not lose the next three games, so to speak. The other thing that I found very interesting was when he alluded once again, as did. Uh, Dave Roberts uh, a week ago on Trojan Live show, 
recruiting. He sat there and said, all you recruits, I hope you hear what I'm saying. He knows that SC's not having a good recruiting year in, in football. Dave Roberts knew it because he attached it to what he was looking for as an interim athletic director. So they are anybody who is watching our, our video here that doesn't think that they don't know what's going on both on the field and off the field in recruiting, I think this is a message they get it and they know what's going on. And I think it's kind of refreshing. Um, I think also, uh, you know, the idea that, that he's uh, out on campus. Now, I read up on him at Cincinnati, even at Colorado. Nobody said he wasn't enthusiastic. Nobody said he didn't come through with what he says. Some of his coaching hires, of course, in football leave a lot to be desired in hindsight. And what I did like about what Carol Folk said and what he said was they both admitted, so to speak, that, hey, everybody fails at something. It's what you do and what you learn from it. And the impression was things didn't go well at Colorado at the end, but he learned what lessons from Colorado, applied them to Cincinnati, and came out looking pretty good. And Folk told me when, we, when I was having a little one-on-one -on -one with her uh, that she said, you know what? It's what you learn. As a scientist, she says, we make mistakes and we learn from our mistakes and try to correct whatever it is that we're exploring or uh, under a microscope, whatever. So, you know, I mean, she was also under a lot of heat at North Carolina at one time because she took a stand on statues of the Confederacy and things like that. So, you know, they, they have some things in common. And, and I tell you why this is important. And I know I'm starting to ramble a little bit, but, you know, if Urban Meyer, is really considered a, a prospect, which I think he is now. I really do. As you know, the LA Times, again today, uh, one of their secondary columnists absolutely said, Urban Meyer's not the one for this school. Well, the primary columnist also has said it like twice. So they're going to have to sit there and say to themselves, look, everyone makes a mistake. If they have an interview with Urban Meyer, which probably will take place if he's a serious candidate. And, he's, and they ask him, what, what happened with uh, some of the things that you're alleged to have been involved in? And he says, you know what, I made big, big mistakes. They're both going to relate some, some of it to themselves. And that Carol Fulton knows what it's like to be behind an eight ball. And so does Mike Bone. So it's possible that they want to see if Urban Meyer has learned from his mistakes. And then they can make a more informed decision. So that's kind of what, what how I looked at it yeah the, the Meyer thing I think it's interesting that you can read into so many things that they said in so many different ways they both mentioned integrity uh Carol Fult kind of every time she talks she brings up integrity uh at some point they also specifically like you said mentioned you learn from your failures and your successes and I think that that kind of lays groundwork to like you said being able to you know, go between the lines a little bit and say, this is a, a second chance opportunity. But the thing I, I, I like that you talked about him talking about recruiting, because I, I had that and the to victory thing as sort of my one two. the fact that he directly addressed recruits. I mean, I, you know, obviously you can't say any names or anything, but to call out recruits, that, that's something you kind of expect from a head coach maybe to do in, in an introductory press conference. But for an athletic director to do it tells you where that ranks kind of in, in his priority and how familiar he is with that. He had a, a question later um, that sort of teed up, not really about recruiting, but he went straight into it and mentioned recruiting maybe five or six times during, during the course of one of his answers. So he knows how important that is. Talked about kind of locking down Los Angeles, then Southern California, then getting out in the region, then going nationally. So he, he has an idea of what, you know, big time recruiting is supposed to look like. I, I thought those two things uh, were really interesting. And then again, we've now we've both mentioned sort of the learning from failures and successes. The fact that when this was announced, Colorado fans seemed pretty universally excited to get him <laughs> back into the conference at a different program. Cincinnati fans, meanwhile, were kind of devastated by this. They, they really liked what he'd done there. So if that gives you sort of a sense of 
the guy learned at Colorado and then applied that at Cincinnati, I, I don't know how you fault, you know, his, his Colorado tenure. If that's something where he's been able to turn the page and, and get better, you've seen coaches kind of all over the place. They'll fail somewhere, learn from that, go somewhere else and, and be a huge success. So I, I, again, like you, it, it's a little bit of, of, uh, you know, wanting to be an optimist about this because you, you want it to, to work. It, it can't, sure. you can't bring in an athletic director and, and have the same results that you've had for, you know, the, the past decade or so. Uh, but I, I think there's enough clues in there, enough keys in there for you to, to really grab onto uh, ha- having some real faith in Mike Bone being able to, to come in and hit the ground running because he knows what to do. He knows what not to do and, and get kind of this thing moving forward it, it, this was a big piece to get put in place in, in terms of taking this athletic department in the direction that carol fulton and, and really all usc fans wanted to go and, and from there the direction we're going to go is we'll, we'll get into a little bit of football now i think uh usc travels to arizona state this weekend in a game that is almost forgotten. I mean, you, you had kind of the, the first initial news of the athletic director coming down the day before the Oregon game. And that team did, did not respond well, obviously, in that Oregon game. Got, got out to a great start and then just sort of fell apart. We'll see if this news can kind of light a, a more positive spark uh, as they go to Arizona State. But USC 5-4 and four, Right now, the same five and four that they were last year before, again, the wheels fell off at the end of the year. You talk about good programs, finish strong. What do you expect from this trip to Arizona State, just kind of in, in an overall terms of, of where this team is right now, the, the psyche coming off of, of Oregon and having to hit the road? Uh, again, you know, that there is the Colorado win, but certainly not a lot of strong performances on the road from USC this year. Well, you know, I'm concerned. SC is only one game behind Utah. Utah has a bye this week, as does UCLA. Both of those teams will meet uh, the following week in Salt Lake City. But it, it's interesting because here you have Slovis from Arizona, okay? So he's going to be ready to go. He'll have family and friends and everything else. The question is, is the rest of the team ready to go? What I have a lot of trepidation about is that that loss last week was so complete, so devastating. Can this team rebound uh, their record on the road? Yeah, they beat Colorado, but a lot of people say they shouldn't have beaten Colorado. Okay, it was a noble comeback and a win, not to take anything away from it. But, you know, ASU is coming off of two devastating losses. I mean, they got creamed. But you know something? They've had a bye week, and a bye week allows you to kind of get your brain back together. Uh, they're healthier than they've been in a while. And, uh, you know, uh, we talk about uh, Mike Bone and his enthusiasm. And, you know, there was nobody in the press conference uh, on Thursday that said a negative thing. Nobody rolled their eyeballs. I mean, everybody was kind of like, wow, let's get into this. Well, Herm Edwards is that type of person as well. And he's going to get his team fired up, okay? Uh, they've got uh, Jake the Snake Plumber is going to be there. They're going to be talking about him going in the – College Football Hall of Fame. Uh, you know, their capacity of uh, ASU's Sun Devil Stadium is smaller. They, uh, what I read was there was at the time, I think two days ago, just 2,000 tickets left uh, to, were, you know, sellout. It's a rare day game. Uh, USC, uh, you know, day games, uh, what's their record on day games? Uh, not too good. Uh, you know, BYU overtime loss in Washington, not too good. So I, I, you know, right now, I mean, SC is a one and a half point underdog and uh, we'll see if they're ready to go. I think they've got to be, get to the point in the game where they, they get more concentrated of, about winning. Like, hey, let's go out and win it. We're, you know, we're in the second half. We're going to find out what, what kind of character this team has. You know, Clay Helton says, oh, it's a special team. Well, as you pointed out, we were in the same position last year and, of course, Helton had said last year, wait till November. You're going to see – you're really going to be happy with November. Well, we're in November, and uh, you know what? We're in the same spot we were last time, so we're going to find out. Yeah, so far the November showing not good, that, that game against Oregon. <laughs> so USC in terms of personnel uh, in this game, some injury updates. Uh, Drake Jackson 
and Talanoa Hufanga, who have been have been injured. Uh, they'll both play against Arizona State. Kind of the, how, how much, uh, how you know, close to 100% healthy they are, kind of remains to be seen. But Clay Helton saying he expects to get something out of both of them, and that that's those are two massive additions uh, to to the defense. Having played without them uh, at various times this year has really hurt them. One guy USC is going to lose is Hunter Eccles. He's out for the rest of the season. Uh, he's going to have shoulder surgery. So Malik McLean, who's also missed time, feels like you can say that about just about anybody uh, on either side of the ball this year. Malik McLean kind of expected to step up there. Although if Drake Jackson's back, we've certainly seen that the comfort level of going with four uh, defensive linemen there. And then running back Stephen Carr. There, there's a chance that he goes kind of a game time, maybe 50-50, uh, decision. Clay Elton during the week was talking about maybe getting him and Vivai back for the next week against Cal, but it sounds like there there is a chance uh, that Stephen Carr goes against Arizona State, and just getting any one of the running backs back uh, would be would be big. I think everyone likes what they've seen from from true freshman Keenan Kristen so far, but the coaches that they're they're not going to throw 20 25 carries at him and so unless you can find something else in that running game which we've seen Amon Ross St. Brown uh take take a handoff against Colorado we saw some of that sort of touch pass uh in motion to to Michael Pittman against Oregon it sounded like from what running backs coach Mike Jinx was saying this week there's something else in the running game they, they've got to sort of be able to develop something else whether that's personnel or scheme I, I think we'll see but I, I don't think they could sit back there and let Keaton Slovis throw the ball 57 times against Arizona State and, and think they're going to win like what they had to do against Oregon so coming up with something uh in in the running game is going to be interesting you mentioned Keenan uh uh Keaton Slovis going back to Arizona Austin Jackson uh, the left tackle also from Arizona and Isaiah Polamau who his ejection against Oregon Boy, that, that kind of seemed to set the tone for the defense the rest of the way. Everything seemed to fall apart. So if you can get those two safeties back for a full game against Arizona State, I think Arizona State sets up as a team. You've got a, a true freshman quarterback in Jaden Daniels who has had some true freshman moments but also been very good. I, I think Arizona State is as comfortable with him as USC is with, with Keaton Slovis back there. Uh, under center he's a guy who can escape the pocket do it quickly and pick up big yards he, he's one of the best in the country at scrambling on third downs uh picking up first downs in those situations and then you know benjamin the running back he's a guy who can break tackles he he hasn't really had the year that maybe you expect he and and zach moss as kind of the two big time pac-12 running backs uh but but you know Benjamin he he's gotten it going of late a, a few hundred yard games here uh in a row recently and then the they've got a couple real speedy wide receivers that can break tackles and hit you for big time yards after the catch we talked to coach K uh this this week asked him what the keys were going to be tackling this is a, an elusive quarterback a big physical running back and wide receivers that can really get upfield quickly after they catch the ball. I think we're going to see with the USC defense how good they can tackle, how well they can tackle this week. It's been literally hit or miss uh, for, for tackling from them for the entire length of the season. There's, there really hasn't been a game where you can say tackling has just been absolutely lights out. So Arizona State is going to test them there turn it over to you kind of offensively for USC. What, what do you expect from them uh, against an Arizona State defense that has been better than its offense? But again, it's an Arizona State team where if a typical USC team shows up and plays their game, it's not an Arizona State team that's sort of overwhelming or, or that scares you in a, in a whole lot of areas. Well, you know, against Utah in the loss, they had a season high nine tackles for losses. Okay. And that tells me they get up field. Okay. And we know that, you know, if SC goes to a wide receiver, you know, five, five wide receivers, you know, uh, Slovis is like a pinata back there. You know, either he gets it off or they get to him. Uh, so I think that uh, it's going to be a very difficult 
thing for the Trojan offense uh, because I think – remember that Herm Edwards was a very good cornerback at Cal. Okay, he's a defensive-minded guy. He's going to try to take Pittman out of the game. Uh, I'm more concerned about the SC defense myself against uh, Benjamin. You know, Benjamin is ready to explode, in my opinion. SC is a poor tackling team. It, they just are, okay? And they don't necessarily get a lot of law, you know, tackles for losses. Uh, and I'm concerned that Benjamin, if he gets off and early and they pound away and pound away, remember, it's going to be about 87, 86 degrees because, I mean, for November, that's still warm. Okay, in Sun Devil Stadium. So, you know, there's the attrition rate of what's, what's, what's happening. But you know what? There's a reason that uh, it's only a one and a half point uh, favorite. Started off that SC was a favorite, then it swung to Arizona State. So I think the real battle, of course, is between the, the true freshman quarterbacks. We'll see which one, uh, you know, stands up and makes the difference or doesn't have turnovers. Yeah, Arizona State, 10th in the Pac-12 in, in scoring offense, 10th in the Pac-12 in, in total offense. It's not an offense that does a whole lot, but defensively, they do a lot of things well. They do not give up big plays. They all tackle well. This is a well-coached defense, and it's it's a battle-tested team. They, they've gone to Michigan State and won. They've gone to Cal and won. These are, those are two, again, this, this game's not on the road for them, but they've shown – that they can kind of stand up uh, to stout defenses. They, they can go, you know, to and, and defend offenses. This is a good team. I think this is one of those teams that shows you if you're a good team. If you make mistakes, like, you know, Graham Harrell talks about uh, kind of consistency and, and getting guy, all 11 guys to do the right thing on every single play. If you have those mistakes throughout the game, Arizona State is absolutely one of those programs and teams this year that can take advantage of that. Defensively, Arizona State, they, they do not intercept the ball well. You're coming off of uh, a game against Oregon, led the nation in interceptions, got three of them against USC. Arizona State does not do that well, but you go from playing Oregon, the number one team in the Pac-12 in terms of turnover margin, to Arizona State, the number two team in the Pac-12 in, in turnover margin. So again, boy, it feels like we could be talking about the season opener here. Turnover margin for USC. Can they figure that out uh, against Arizona State? Can you, you know, come up with a couple cheap ones on defense? Can you hold on to the ball uh, on offense? I, I think it, you know, it's, it's broken record time, right? It's the same sorts of things on defense. Can you tackle? Can you take the ball away? Can you get to the quarterback? Can you not give up big third downs? And you can you get off the field? Can you force a couple three and outs? USC last in the nation uh, in forcing three and outs. It, it's it's got to be better defensively. This is not again we just threw out the numbers for Arizona's uh, Arizona State's attack. They have not put up big numbers this season, but. They've got some guys capable of moving the ball. So it, it's going to be up to USC to, to really kind of rise up and, and play on the road. And we'll see how much this team, how they can bounce back, how much they want to kind of play for Clay Helton and, and close out the season uh, against Arizona State. I, it, it's back to not knowing what's coming out of the tunnel for USC, I think. I, I think there's a lot sort of up in the air about what to expect from USC in this game because of looking back at last week and because of kind of what's available for USC this week and where they have to go play the game. Well, I think one of the things they should be up for is because it's going to be on national television on ABC. I mean, last week was not a very pleasant site for national television against Oregon. Now they're going to play Arizona state. If they dispense another stinker, uh, I don't think that they'll get blitzed like they did with Oregon, but let's suppose that they don't look good uh, against Arizona State. You want to get embarrassed again on national television? I mean, at, at this point in time, as you said at the very beginning, this is almost like an afterthought of the season right now. So many people have turned their attention to, to Mike Bone. So many people are talking about Urban Meyer. It's almost like, oh, yeah, we got a game, don't we? Uh, oh, it's on TV? Yeah. Oh, what time is the game? 
uh, oh, we, we, we lost? Oh, okay, that's all right. Do uh, you think they'll fire uh, Clay Helton after this game? Let me just address that for a second. I don't think Clay Helton's going to get fired after this game because Bone is the athletic director, and he's going to be in Cincinnati. So it would be hard for me to believe. Now, today, uh, Helton, by the way, did meet Bone one-on-one uh, this afternoon. And uh, if you saw the tape of the uh, press conference or the media scrum, you know, Helton was just uh, – couldn't stop talking about all the positives that, that Bone was saying. So I don't think this is going to be the week it's going to happen if it happens. But the truth of the matter is, I think the mindset of USC fans right now is – the, 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 the page is turned, you know. Uh, I think they still want to see SC win, but I don't think it's like, oh, if SC wins, all right, or if SC loses, oh, wow. I think they've resigned themselves to what they're doing. And, uh, you know, you call it as you want. So moving on from that, you're, let, let's get into the picks. Who, who do you have this weekend, USC at Arizona State? I think Arizona, Arizona State's going to win. I think they're going to be the more um, emotional team. I think they're more, more uh, disciplined team. I think they, you know, they're full strength. And uh, I think if Arizona State's going to get to SC, they have to do an early knockout so that it, they, SC stays in a malaise. Uh, because if the second half of SC really gets into it, uh, as you've said, they're unpredictable. Well, now you've thrown me for a loop. I, I was ready to. Uh to go with Arizona State. I, 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 think, I think Arizona State has enough. I, I, I do not like to guess it. I, I always want to pick USC to win, and maybe this will reverse jinx them a little bit. But that, uh, again, what Oregon was able to kind of get rolling against USC, that, that's a tough thing to bounce back from, and especially on the road. I'm still kind of curious to see how healthy Drake Jackson and Talanoa Hufanga are. Uh, and, and I'm curious to see now, does that, naming that athletic director, does that give them a boost or does that sort of <laughs> click a little bit into, like you said, let's just get to the end of the season and try to figure out, you know, where we go from here. I, I think there's a lot, like we mentioned, a lot still up in the air. Um, I I think USC has a chance. I, I don't think this is something where they're walking into anything. Well, are you, are you predicting the win or lose? Certain doom. I, I, if I had to pick, I think Arizona on. State wins. I, I think Arizona State gets the ball to, you know, Benjamin, like you mentioned. I think that USC has trouble tackling again, and, and I think Arizona State pulls it out at home. I, I don't think it's a blowout. I don't think it's a, an Oregon or anything. Um, and, and I certainly hope USC can, can go in there. and. and well, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you something. I made a, I'll never do this again. Last week, I felt in my heart, or my head, I should say, that Oregon was going to trample SC. But out of my mouth, because I figured, okay, they're at home. You know what? This is a big game. They're not going to blow it. Uh, they're going to compete all the way. And uh, you know what? I felt like a fool. And I go, I knew better. I knew better. So I'm sorry to everyone who's watching this. From now on, I'm just saying what I really think. I'm not going to let my heart you know, dictate what my head is telling me. Uh, and so... Therefore, that's why I'm saying Arizona State. I hope I'm wrong, but I think it's Arizona State. And, I, and like I mentioned, I think turnovers are absolutely the key to watch. If USC can play a clean game there, I like their chances. I'm just not going to bet on them being able to play uh, a clean game when it comes to turnovers against a team that has proven that they can win the turnover battle in, in virtually every game. So hopefully everyone's turning, tuning in uh, next week to hear us talking about how we were wrong uh, as USC <laughs> goes up to Cal but for this week that's the look at, at new athletic director Mike Bone being introduced and then USC going out to the desert to face Arizona State so for Greg Katz this is Eric McKinney thanks for watching we are SC game day